Good morning. Today I want to read from Psalm 31 verse 22. So we finished Psalm 30 and now we're getting to Psalm 31. And I'm going down to the third last verse of Psalm 31. And what it says here in the NIV, it says, In my alarm I said, I am cut off from your sight. Now what does it mean if he says, In my alarm I've said, I'm cut off in your sight. The King James says it beautifully, it says, And I said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. And then he goes on, he says, Nevertheless, you've heard the voice of my supplication when I cried unto you. Isn't that powerful? Aren't we so many times at a place where we in our haste say, I am cut off from before the eyes of the Lord? That would mean, cut off would mean, I am entering death. I am dying. Uh, God does not look upon me favorably. As we would say, say yesterday, <clears throat> uh, you know, so many times we would think, God has turned his face from me. In your anger, you've turned your face from me. You know, and uh, weeping is in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And then we find that when it doesn't go well with us, that we think that God is angry. But so many times, the bad that we are experiencing in our life is on account of our, on what we bring over ourselves. And then we experience it as God not being there. But here it says that, uh, for I said in my haste, I'm cut off before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplication when I cried. I want to read verse 21. It says, Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. So it, what he basically says is that God has showed mercy to David, but he was so caught up with the difficulty that he was going through on account of people persecuting him. And many times the persecution that would come to some of these kings would be on account of their own pride. One of the things that I've discovered in the scriptures is that one of the sins that is one would call an original sin, where in the kings, especially if you go and read Ezekiel 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32, there's a lot of rebuke towards kings that were standing in the solitude of themselves. They start to see themselves as gods, which is a type and a shadow of what was going on, what's going on in all people, even in Adam, uh, what was going on in Israel. For instance, Israel was just nothing, a, a non-existing nation. And then God formed Israel from the womb of Sarah. Uh, you know, where, when Abraham and Sarah came together, where they didn't, they weren't even uh, uh, supposed to have children. They were as good as dead. And then God from that nothingness brought forth Israel. When they were in a difficult time, uh, they then came when there were just about 70 Jews, if you want to all the Jews or Israelites were only 70 people big as a nation. They were dying out in hunger. And then Joseph, God picked Joseph and made a place for them in Egypt. And so saved them from death, preserved them there. Then the, the, the king there started to become a god in himself. Uh, he didn't know Joseph, which talks about God's favor, they pushed God's favor aside, and then this um, king became a god in himself. And then God said unto Moses, Moses, I'll make you a god unto Pharaoh. So now you're going to rule over him, and I will speak words, and you will see how I will deliver. And what happened? The moment the Pharaoh got to a place where he became wicked and violent, in oppressing another for his own wealth, wherein he now had to take from another to preserve his own life, to make himself unendingly rich, making himself a god, a god in himself, not relying upon God. What do we find with a Pharaoh? His life is being cut short. Why? Because he stands in the power of himself. 
then we find Israel doing the same thing. We are the people of God, you know, then we in our own self, we'll make use of God to get our will done in the earth. And what do we find? We find Israel also suffering. And that is the thing that we need to realize as Christians. The problem that I think we have in Christianity is this. We are at a place where we have made everything about going to heaven one day. What will happen? You know, am I living good enough on earth so that I can go to heaven? Uh, if we can realize that it's not so much about where we go when we die, but that Christianity is about the kingdom of God coming to the earth. And even if you die, the rulership of God's kingdom is greater than death and that you will be raised from the dead to share in what God is building in this earth, which will be here forever. Now, when we realize that, we come to a place where we say, God, uh, and, and, and I think this is a problem that we've had. Let me now in, in, interrupting myself, but we've been thinking of heaven as where we go when we die. That's the aim. We just live here for a while and we're going there. That is it. Therefore, we've thought that belief in Jesus takes me to heaven and then by my own power, I must make a living in this earth. Now, if you realize that the kingdom of God is about bringing his life to the earth, you will say, well, it's not just about where I go when I die, but it's about how God brings forth his life in this earth. And now I find that his rulership is actually about him bringing life to me in this earth. And now I'm not separating salvation from a normal life in this world like making these devotionals that I am making. I'm not making these devotionals so that I am, uh, so that I can have support, that somebody can be blessed with my ministry and support me financially. No, I'm making these devotionals because in my heart, I feel that God has served me with life and his life is in my heart. And now I want to serve others with this. And I felt that that is what I want to do. I want to preach the gospel and share the gospel with people for the rest of my life. And I even want to go to a place where I would put a work aside, a job aside, and just do this. And then there were people that were just supporting the ministry by the gratitude in their heart or simply the life of God that's in them. God has served them and they've got the ability to do business or have a good job. And they felt, well, let us, and I feel I want to share in the life of God and let me give some money to Beth that he can do this. If we think of the kingdom of God coming to earth, we realize that we in this earth we are now the place where God lives, where his wisdom lives. I want to just remind you of the message that I've preached on the 21st of April, 2024, where I spoke about powers and principalities and the wisdom of God being made known to powers and principalities. Go and find it on my YouTube channel in my 2024 uh, Sunday service archive. The YouTube channel is Dynamic Love Ministries. You can go and listen to it there again, and you'll see how this, it's all about God bringing life to this earth. And so many times in our haste, when things don't go well with us in the world, we would say, God has forgiven us, uh, forgotten us. Where is God? I'm cut off from before God. But then we find, nevertheless, you've heard my voice. And I want to say it this way. We might say as a people, look at how many people has been born. They've called upon God. They've died. And they were cut off before God. God didn't answer them. You might find some of your family members that has called upon the Lord in sickness or in cancer and they've died. And one might say, you know, well, uh, we were cut off before God. God has done nothing for me in this earth. Uh, you know, we were cut off. Yeah, my family member is now with God in heaven, but he's done nothing for us in earth. I want to submit this to you, that even if you say that, you are speaking in haste. Let us give God the time to do what he's promised. He's raised Jesus from the dead. And he has promised that he will raise all those that believe upon him from the dead to live forevermore. 
And I want to submit to you, if we say, well, somebody even called upon the Lord and he died, he was cut off from before the face, let us not answer in haste. Let us not in our haste say we are cut off from before the eyes of the Lord. I want to say, even if that happened, nevertheless, we would find that God has heard our voice and our supplications when we cried unto him. And we will say in the resurrection, Oh, love the Lord, all you saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful. How does God preserve the faithful? He preserves us as he preserved Jesus in raising him from the dead. And that is the same that there is for us. Now, I've said a lot in this devotional. Go and think about this. I've only touched on one verse. Psalm 31 is a long psalm where David laments what he's going through and talking about a lot of the pain that he's going through that I didn't want to get into. But just think about this. Let us not in our haste judge and say, God is not with us. We will find that God is with us in everyday life. We will find that God is with us every month, and we will find that God is with us, even if we've died, in the greater scheme of things, wherein we share in his resurrection, in the resurrection that God has made available in Jesus. Amen.